bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture and in this lecture we are going to continue with chapter 2 of class 10th alternative english which is man against virus so in the last lecture we had read how louis pasteur uh, was trying to find the cure for rabies how he was actually determined to go through any extent and find a cure for it we will read further and understand whether he was able to do it or not so eagerly he and rooks began a series of experiments to test the new idea now what was this new idea that came to their mind louis pasteur thought that since an animal who was uh, the you know who got rabies was always paralyzed before dying so that meant there was something with the brain the connection was with the brain so he had instructed his uh, you know his uh, you know some of the rooks who was actually helping him who was assisting him to look into the brain and the spinal cord for that germ of rabies so this was the idea that they had to test on they took samples of the brain of a dog uh that had died of rabies and injected them under the skins of experimental animals so now what did they do they got very eager they got very excited and they now took samples of the brain of the dog who had died because of rabies and they injected that into the experimental animals the animals whom they were using for their experiments so they inserted that into the animals then they waited anxiously for the results it was a long wait because the symptoms of rabies often did not appear for weeks but finally many of their experimental animals definitely developed signs of rabies we are on to something said pasteur <clears throat> this is a much surer method than using the saliva i think the rabies germ does attack the brain and spinal cord it prefers to live there in fact if we want to grow it we will have to give it the right surroundings broth won't be of any use here so after they had injected the samples you know into those animals that they had taken from the brain of the uh, you know of the dog who had got infected with rabies yes so they had to wait obviously because there were times when the symptoms of rabies took weeks to develop so they were very anxious they were very nervous to know what the results were going to be but many of those experimental animals into whom they had injected uh, that uh, sample they developed rabies and that is when pasteur declared that they are on to something that there was some success that they had finally achieved he said that this method was much surer method so this method was more confirm than getting uh, the saliva and injecting it to the other animals he then confirmed that the rabies germ existed in the brain and the spinal cord and rather we can say that this germ preferred to live in the brain and the spinal cord he said that if that germ has to grow it must get the right surroundings for any germ to grow it has to get the right surroundings broth won't be of any use here so he realized that that liquid that saliva that they were collecting from the mad dogs was of no use to them at all rock suggested that it would be better to inject the germ straight into the brain if that was where it traveled anyway 
By now they had discovered that rabbits as well as dogs could have rabies. So they took a small piece of the brain of another rabbit. After only seven days, this rabbit developed rabies. This is a much faster method than injecting under the skin, said Pasteur. Evidently, the rabies germ does live in the brain. The sooner it gets there, the sooner it has an effect. So, Rokes then suggested that it would be better for them if they can inject the germ straight into the brain. So, they thought that if they injected that germ straight away into the brain of the experimental animals rather than injecting it onto the skin, then I think that would be a better option. So, now they had discovered that rabbits as well as dogs both could have rabies. So, rabies did not only exist in dogs but also in rabbits. So, what did they do? They took a small piece of the brain of another rabbit and then they had put it in the experimental animal. It took only seven days and that animal, that rabbit in whose uh, brain this had been injected, that rabbit developed rabies and they realized that this method of injecting directly into the brain was obviously faster than injecting it in some other body part. Evidently, evidently means clearly. So, now it was very clear that the rabies germ lives where? Which part of the body? It lives in the brain. The sooner it gets there, the sooner it has an effect. And how early it will affect you will depend on how early it will reach your brain. Then they tested the strength of the germ by noting how quickly a rabbit developed rabies after the germ was injected into his brain. They found that strength varied depending on what kind of animal it had been living in. Germs from the laboratory rabbits were surprisingly much more virulent than germs taken from stray mad dogs. We will use the most virulent kind in uh, trying to make a vaccine, Pasteur announced. Then the vaccine is bound to be a protection against all different strengths of germs. So, what did they do? Then they tested the strength of the germ. So, what did they do? The strength, how powerful that germ was, they wanted to test that. By noting how quickly a rabbit developed rabies after the germ was injected into its brain. So, how were they trying to find out how strong the germ was? By trying to figure out how many days did it take to affect. You know, after being injected into the brain, how many days did it take to cause rabies? They found that how strong that germ was, that varied. Varied, it was different. And on what did it depend? It depended on what kind of animal it had been living in. What kind of the animal was that germ taken from? Germs that were taken from the rabbits who were there in the laboratory were more virulent. Virulent were more violent and quick as compared to the germs that they had taken from the mad stray dogs. Stray dogs, the dogs that are just, you know, living on the streets on their own. He said, Pasteur said that we are going to use the most virulent in kind in uh, trying to make a vaccine obviously so he wanted to make a vaccine using the most violent germ and from where did they get these virulent germs from those rabbits who were there in the laboratory then the vaccine is bound to be a protection against all different strengths of the germs
So now Louis Pasteur was sure that once they have the max, uh, you know, vaccine for the germ, which was the most uh, violent of all, that would mean that that vaccine is going to cure all the other different uh, kinds of viruses, you know, different strengths of the viruses. The next move was to try weakening the germ as they could not see it or find a way of growing it outside the brain they had to work with infected brains the germ seemed to favor a region of the brain called medulla so they used samples from there rokes put these into a sterile solution which he then closed as days went by the pieces of medulla shriveled Let's see if the rabies germ is still living in these pieces. Pasteur said finally, the only way that they, uh, they could test it was to grind up the pieces and inject them into healthy animals. When they did this, the animals appeared to get rabies, but instead of getting really sick, they recovered rapidly. So what happened next? What was his next step? was to weaken the germ, to make the germ weak now. As they could not see it or find a way of growing it outside the brain, they had to work with the infected brains. Now that they were sure that this germ, which was actually causing rabies, existed in the brain, the reason for this uh, a germ was because it got the brain environment. So they had to work with the infected brains. Infected brains means the brains of those animals who had rabies. The germ seemed to favor a region of the brain called the medulla. So this rabies germ always grew in one part of the brain which was the medulla. And therefore, they collected samples from that part only. Rooks put, uh, he had put those samples into a sterile solution. Now, we have already learned what is the meaning of sterile. Something which is medicated in such a manner that there is no germ in it. There is no external, uh, you know, microbe in it. So, Whatever sample they collected from the brain, they put it in the sterile solution, which he closed. The days went by, the pieces of the medulla shriveled. Shri shriveling, you know, they started getting shorter and shorter. They, beca they became very compact. Let's see if the rabies germ is still living in these places. And after the medulla had become shriveled, Louis Pasteur and Rooks wanted to find out if the rabies germ still existed in that brain or not. The only way they could do was to grind up the pieces. So those pieces of medulla, they just could grind it and they could inject those pieces into the healthy animals. When they did that, the animal uh, appeared to get rabies. But instead of getting sick, they rapidly recovered. So what happened now? The animals, after they had got the injection of those pieces of medulla, they did get rabies, but because of it, they did not get sick. Their health did not deteriorate. Rather, they recovered. They became fit and healthy very quickly. When Pasteur saw what had happened, he was immediately hopeful. He, uh, it looks as if we may have found the way to weaken the rabies vaccine. Yeah, rabies germ, he said eagerly. Rooks, we shall conquer it yet. Why should those animals have recovered unless the germs they got were weak ones? Let's test infected medullas each day and see if their effect lessens. 
Now what was there in Louis Pasteur's mind? When he saw what had happened, he obviously was very hopeful. He had this ray of hope in him that he would be able to find a vaccine soon. So he suggested to Roe that it looks as if we may have found the way to weaken the rabies germ. So putting it in a sterile solution and then injecting it back to the healthy animals, this was one of the uh, ways in which the rabies germ could become weak. Rokes, we shall conquer it yet. But his purpose was not to weaken the rabies germ. His purpose was to conquer it. Conquer it to win over it. To make sure that the germ would die altogether. Why should those animals have recovered unless the germs they got were weak ones? He said the only way in which or the only way because of which those animals recovered rather than getting bad healthily, uh, you know, health-wise, was because the germs that were injected into them were weak germs. So, since the germs were weak, they could not prosper, they could not flourish in the brain of that animal and therefore they died. Then he suggested, let's test infected medullas each day. And see if their effect lessens. He then suggested that now what we are going to do. All those animals who had got rabies. We are going to test their medullas every day. In order to see whether the effect of rabies became bad or became weak day by day. Rokes prepared a whole series of infected medullas and tested them by injecting an extra dose from the first after it had aged only one day, from the second after it had aged two days and so on. The first day medullas always produced rabies. But the longer the medullas had dried and shriveled, the less effect they had. By the time a piece of medulla was 14 days old, it was harmless. What did Rokes do then? He prepared a whole series of infected medulla. So there was a proper series of the infected medullas. And he tested them by injecting an extra dose from the first after it had aged one day. So basically what was he doing? There were a lot of medullas, infected medullas uh, that were there. After the medulla was just one day old, you know, the animal had got rabies just a day ago. So he took out some samples, injected it in some other healthy animal. When the medulla was two days old, he then took out some other samples and then he injected it in the other animal. When the medulla was three days old, he again took out a sample and he injected it in the other uh, healthy animals. And this process continued to go. And he realized that the longer the medullas had dried, so if the medulla was very dried, the effect of that rabies germ was less. And by the time that medulla was 14 days old, the rabies germ had died altogether. This meant that the rabies germ of any strength could be prepared. If the weakened uh, rabies germs could safely stimulate an animal's defenses, a way of making a vaccine had been found. So... What did this mean? This meant that the rabies germ of any strength, no matter how powerful that rabies germ was, the rabies germ of any strength could be prepared. So, laboratory uh, could be used to make a rabies germ of any strength. And if the weakened rabies germs could safely stimulate an animal's defenses, what does it mean? That if the rabies germ, which was weak in nature, 
if that weak rabies germ could uh, you know provide a boost to the defense mechanism of the animal defense mechanism our internal immunity system so if actually it boosted the defense it boosted the immunity of the animal then yes they were sure that they had somewhere found the vaccine for it the men began the experiment to test their ideas first they injected a dog with a 14 day old medulla the next day they injected a 13 day old medulla they went on this way until the 14th day they injected a 1 day medulla which they knew would ordinarily give their dog rabies it did not weeks later the dog frisked about as happily as ever we've done it whispered pa- uh, whispered pasture hardly daring to believe it they are immune they are safe so now that these people that is lewis pasture and rogues they were sure that the germ was actually going to the weaker rabies germ was going to boost up the immunity the defense mechanism of the animal so they again wanted to experiment it so what did they do they first injected in a dog a 14 day old medulla so now they were uh, you know they began in a descending order so they began with the medulla which was 14 day old then they injected 13 day old then 12 day old 11 day old and so on and so forth now at the end when they injected the medulla which was just 1 day old technically it should have caused rabies in the other dog in the other animal but it did not in fact weeks later that dog frisked about frisked about jumped about here and there very happily and louis pasteur was now happy he was sure he just could not believe that they had found the cure to rabies and that everybody was safe and immune so my dear students as we just read we got to know about the brilliance of louis pasteur we got to know the kind of experiment that he had actually done to find out and to save everyone from this deadly uh, virus of rabies we read how many efforts did he take in order to ensure that the vaccine was actually found so at the beginning we had read that obviously with a lot of courage he took the saliva from the mouth of a you know of an angry mad bulldog he took that saliva he inserted it when he inserted it in the experimental animals some of them got rabies some of them did not then his assistant rook suggested that paul burt who was another scientist who was working on this vaccine he was doing something with the blood because after all all the germs move through the blood so they did it they took out the blood of the animal infected with rabies and they inserted it in some other animal but it had no effect at all this <clears throat> made them very very surprised why because obviously whatever things travel in our body they travel through the blood then louis pasteur he did not lose heart rather he started thinking about the symptoms of rabies and the thing that got to his mind was that the animal who gets infected with rabies that animal gets paralyzed eventually and dies so he realized that something uh, was connected there was some connection with the brain of the animal so they took out a sample from the brain and when they injected it through the skin they saw that the animals got rabies rook suggested that they should try and insert that part of uh, the infected brain directly into the brain of the experimental animal 
and when he did the result was obviously quicker so this made him realize that the rabies germ existed in the blood uh, in the brain of the animal and where exactly did it lie in the brain in the medulla so they collected some medulla from the uh, infected animal they put that medulla in a sterile solution and then they injected it in the uh, experimental animal what did they observe that when they had done it the animal did get rabies but the health of that animal rather than getting worse it improved the animal recovered and was able to survive now he had got a direction he knew it was with the weak germ of the rabies so what did he do he moved in a descending order now so he first injected a germ which was 14 day old then 13 then 12 11 and so on and so forth he realized that by the time they injected uh the germ in the animal that was one day old so beginning with 14 when they moved towards one day old medulla the animal did not get rabies rather the animal was just laughing and jumping around here and there with all sorts of uh, happiness and excitement and the same level of excitement could be seen in pasture because now he was sure that they had found the cure So my dear students this was a brilliant masterpiece written by Naveen Sulaiman